Welcome to the Institute for Inclusive and Transformative Scholarship. Um, we are also the Office of Undergraduate Research. And we do a lot of stuff in our undergraduate research on campus. Uh, stuff like this, workshops and supporting students for doing research and also faculty. Um, thank you for making the time today. Uh, we are a smaller group. So let me keep this very interactive. Please feel free to raise your hand and you might ask questions. And that's, this is truly a workshop. So we'd spend some time, you have some sheets over there. So spend some time doing that workshop in motion also. Um, but to start off with the check-in. So let's start off with your name, your major or research area. How are you entering the space today? And one thing you want to learn today. Um, so I'm Lavanya. I am my background is communication and marketing and activities. Uh, and this is stuff that I really enjoy doing. Um, I am cool. I don't like rain. <laughs> and I am really excited to learn more about your research and how I can support you. Uh, at the poster showcase and generally making uh, scripts. So, uh, start with you. Hello, uh, my name is Mac. Uh, I am in the anthropology department, but I'm uh, researching science communication with CUIC. Um I'm admittedly pretty tired. I'm in the middle of analyzing results as fast as possible so I can actually have them on the poster. Um, and I'm interested in learning more about how to integrate uh, figures and statistics into my poster without seeming boring. And now that I will actually have like numeric results. Uh, my name is Michael. Uh, I'm in the master's program, and I'm doing research with the Nas National Science Foundation right now. Uh, one word to describe how I'm feeling is just excited. Uh, this is kind of cool to me. It's my first experience doing this, so it's been pretty fascinating to see how it all works out. Uh, and one thing that I'm hoping to learn today is just sort of how to go about putting my information on a trifold because this will be my first time doing that. Uh, I'm Caleb. Uh, I'm in the creative writing MFA, uh, doing poetry, some kind of stuff. Um, trepidation is probably a word of today because despite doing a few minute thesis, I'm still not sure like what creatively counts as research and then how to catch that. And that feels kind of embarrassing to admit coming into it. But uh, that's something I need to learn. And, so that's what I'm hoping to learn today. Hi everyone, I'm Yaz and I'm doing a PhD in ecology. Um, I'm excited here, being here, just to learn probably something new about PowerPoint and user presentations. And um, yeah, I'm always seeking learning something new. Um, hi, my name is Sarah. I'm also with the anthropology department, specifically with bioarchaeology. Um, one word to describe how I'm feeling is a bit overwhelmed. Uh, the second semester of grad school since just that time of my life, I guess. Um, but I am feeling hopeful because I'm really excited to learn today about how to kind of get my ideas into a poster format compared to what I'm used to, do, which is writing like 10 page papers. Yeah. Um, hi everyone, my name is Maria Figueroa. I am in the Biomolecular Sciences PhD program. Um, I like the rain, so it's cold for me outside. <laughs> um, just a little bit cold. Um, what I want to learn today is how to organize effectively what I'm trying to communicate or share with other people. So, yeah, that's it. My name is Patty. I'm in the public administration uh, program, uh, and right now I'm researching public opinion and misconceptions about natural resource management strategies. Um, I'm also feeling hopeful and overwhelmed. I'm in my last semester, so I graduate and right after the showcase, so I'm feeling like I'm <laughs> um, And I think similarly, I'm really looking to figure out how to communicate Things that I have very well read about to people who may not, you know, be as informed. My name is Erin. I'm a political science major and environmental studies minor. Um, I'm researching carbon sequestration on public lands in the West and kind of the feasibility of it. 
Um, feeling okay, I guess, coming in today, feeling excited to have this kind of resource to take advantage of, which is awesome. Um, and I'm definitely looking to try to figure out how to better organize and kind of work with what I have right now to hopefully make it a little bit stronger. Yeah, thank you. Um, so general sense, a lot of us are tired. So I'll keep this simple. Uh, kind of give you a, some big takeaways that will help you think. You know, we've also talked about organizing your posters, so we cover that also. We can also look at uh, touch on graphs and pictures and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. So what we can do is kind of gen general overview of posters and what they are meant to be. Then we talk about the actual creation process once we understand the goals of a poster. And then we also talk about talking about your poster because creating is just one half of it. You'll be there standing in, in the sub next to your poster. So what do you say about this poster that you've spent so many hours making? This is a, a picture from the last year or the year before that, I think, showcase. Um, the kind of generally, I just wanted to start off with uh, asking how many of you have already have some experience presenting a poster? Okay. Kind of, yeah. A lot of you, some as uh, not much. Um, that is good. So, you, is there anyone here who's ne never made a poster or never seen a poster? Never made a poster. But all of you have seen posters in conferences. Uh, is there anybody who's uh, not attended a conference or has never seen a poster? Okay. So this kind of some baseline, we all know what that setup looks like, which is very similar to this. So looking back at your own experience of uh, being at conferences, what would make you stop and look at a poster? And anyone here, feel free to. Figures. Is there anything specific about a figure that makes you want to see it? Or is it just that those just numbers? Just simple figures. I mean, like, especially photos more than graphs. Uh, and the title and its own. Other thoughts? Like a good visual design and like hierarchy, so you know, sort of what's first and what's next rather than everything's on the same field. Right. Anything else? Colors. Sorry, Do you see the colors? Like uh, if colors. I see um, a very um, bright color, for example, like if that would cut my attention, and then I will approach the book and see oh, what this is about. So. Uh, yeah, those are all very valid points. Think about those things as you design your own poster. You want people to stop and, and look at it. Okay. So, uh, so, to your point, an effective poster is easy to read. Uh, it's eye-catching, so kind of those colors. Arouses readers' interest, um, to your point, those figures and graphs that make you want to look at them provides information in a digestible format. What that means is the poster is not overwhelming, right? You just, you look at it and you can understand things. It just doesn't, it doesn't put you off and it summarizes work. So a poster is not your research paper. Uh, it's a summary of your work. So remember that as you, as one of you said, I want to figure out how much of my research work put on my poster. It's a summary of your work. It's a tool for you to have a conversation with somebody about your research. Okay. So the goal is not to put everything that you know and are doing about your research on the poster. It's just you put enough information for somebody to know a little bit about what you do and understand what you're doing, how your research is making an impact in the world, and walk away with that, right? So also remember that 
So all of you have been to conferences. There are about 100, 100 to 200 post stops, right? A person might spend, say, an hour walking around looking at 30 posters. Think about that person, how much he's going to remember from the poster. They're unlikely to remember details and stuff, but if you tell them my work uh, impacts climate change, they will remember that. They will not remember details. And if that person knows somebody who's doing research on climate change, they will connect back to you and say, I'm not a student. That student is doing this awesome research on climate change. I think you should you should connect, right? That's one of the big goals of networking. Oh, sorry, conferences, networking. You want your research to be known to other people. You want those connections. Maybe potential employers who see your research benefiting their organization. You want them to remember what you do. You don't want to drown them into in details that they will never remember anyway, right? So think about that. What is your biggest challenge, frustration, or problem in creating a research poster? Uh, for those of you who've already done this, my biggest challenge is condensing all that information into something that people actually have the time to read and recollect. Other thoughts? I feel similarly, it's like the problem is so big, how can you possibly condense it to fit on a poster? Yeah, and that's a very natural approach to kind of want to say everything, but remember that the, remember your audience, they want to remember half of it. So we asked um, undergraduate students at Boise State, and we do uh, these surveys, we asked them uh, what is their biggest challenge, and they came up with uh, all these which is, to your point, deciding what to include and exclude, uh, space, size of poster, uh, not sure how to start. And for these students, a lot of them have never made a poster. So it's for them, it's really overwhelming. Um, people have also had uh, challenges with what templates to use and formatting appearance, which some of you also talked about. So we cover all of these. Okay. So let's talk about a graduate student's showcase. It's on April 10, which is seems April seems so far away, but it's actually 10 days. Um, it's a one-day conference. It's open to the public. Uh, most of you probably know all this, but the part where I wanted to kind of focus on is the judging portion. That all your entries are going to be judged. Uh, I understand that each entry will be judged by these two judges. Uh, you will be required to give a short pitch of your research and we'll talk about that part also. Uh, and the judges will ask you questions and there will be an evaluation component of your poster design and there will be some, there will be a scoring of that and then they announce the uh, winners. So this is the rubric they use. Uh, so this is just for the judges. Remember, you also have a lot of other people who will talk to you. But since there is prize money involved, I thought it would be useful to look at this. And this is also on the showcase website. Um, so uh, you have it there. So the five things, and this is a useful rubric to remember, not only when you talk to the judges, but generally whoever comes and talks to you wants to know about your poster. Also, not just this conference, any conference. I think it's a very useful group. So the kind of things they look at is the background context of your research. Purpose, why are you doing this? What's your research question? Outcomes, or what is the hypothesis you're testing, or what are you hoping to learn through this research process? Uh, the impact is a big picture. What is my research going to do? Or what is my creative activity going to do? Is it going to inspire somebody else? Is it going to give somebody a different take on things? So that would be kind of looking at creative activity uh, and thinking about that. And then your the layout and design of your poster. Okay. And we, I'll come back to these things in a bit. Um, remember, you work with your poster. It's a tool. 
the poster cannot do a job by on its own. So don't leave your poster and walk away. And without a good design and without a good poster, no matter how well you rehearse and uh, pitch your uh, work, it won't be a complete story. Uh, so this is something that I came across in the Council of Undergraduate Research of which we are a member. This was shared there and I think this is a very useful thing to remember not only for creating your poster but also talking about it. And I think the word or kind of is a very fitting word to use which is that really that big thing. So how I would suggest use this is think about the or when you are thinking about designing your poster, when you are thinking about talking about your work. So it's that overarching thing that remember these three things and that is going to drive everything for you. So what do these things mean? The or stands for the objective relevancy and big takeaway of your research. Objective is the purpose and that kind of relates to the judging rubric, the second thing. What do we mean by the objective? What is the research question or project of objective? For those of you who have STEM projects, this is your hypothesis. For those of you who are working on creative, creative activity stuff, this is what you hope to gain why did you start this? Is there a new photography technique that you are trying to discover? Are you trying to attempt a new take or a different way of looking at things? So that is the objective of, of your project. Right? So think about that. Relevancy. Very important. Why would the audience care? Why would somebody uh, who was, who's not in your field care about what you're doing? And remember, at the Graduate Student Showcase, there are students, faculty, there are uh, administrators from all disciplines and all backgrounds. Uh, there's also family and friends and peers and your siblings. A lot of them don't know what you're doing. But people understand big picture things. People understand uh, fire is not good for animals. People understand climate change is bad. People understand those things, right? So think about what you are doing. Why, if you didn't do that, will the world ha be better, safer? Why are you doing it? And some of you are probably doing your research for several months or years. So think about what drives you. What keeps you doing this in the uh, dead hours of the night and you know, gives you that passion to keep doing this. So if you are able to communicate some of that passion, this is the place where you do that. Talk about that relevancy. Why are you doing this? If you didn't do this, how would things not become better? Big takeaway. Uh, again, very important. If there's one thing you want people to remember about your research, what would that be? Just one thing. So think about that one big thing and then maybe add two more to that. Three, not more than three. Nobody, people will not remember more than that. So think of three key takeaways that you want people to remember from your project. Right? Well, uh, again, for, for creative stuff, it would be well, uh, you want people to remember that uh, art can be looked at in a certain, in a different way, or we can think about a certain process or technique in a different way, right? So remember, that's the or. Keep this in mind: your objective, relevancy, and big takeaway. Remember these three things, and everything else, including that worksheet that we'll get to in a bit, will flow from this. Okay, so now we have the art. You've thought about those big picture things. 
So now we have a process which is which I like to call the method to the madness. Uh, we first start off with assessing, which is that worksheet that you have, uh, and these are the questions you have there. So think about the orb, and let's um, spend uh, say five minutes. Uh, Think about the answers or feel free to jot down your answers in the worksheet and we will spend some time maybe uh, share, share some of your answers with the group. Okay. Um, would anybody like to share what they wrote? Uh, just one question or few, few of them or the whole thing. Okay. I think that's a good one for mine. Um, so my audience that I'm mainly targeting uh, would be educators in like the management department. Uh, my research question is how can the National Science Foundation I Corps course improve participant uh, technology commercialization success? Uh, some of the methods that I used was a variety of statistical analysis. Um, in data analysis, building different models, um, and looking at the values of the results. Um, I learned kind of the answer to my question uh, and what the National Science Foundation should do in order to improve that. And then kind of flipping to that backside, the next steps would be to inform the National Science Foundation of my findings to help them improve uh, participant success. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, anybody else would anybody else like to share? So, um, but I think that one of the audience would be the general public and other and figures here on campus and outside of campus. So, my main research question is how uh, we want to know how C oxide nanoparticles affect the gene and protein expression of T cells. Uh, so basically, we want to determine the mechanism of action of these nanoparticles. Uh, part of the methods and techniques that I used uh, to do this were uh, gene and protein quantification techniques. Uh, for those who know, like quantitative PCR, Western blocks. Um, I also included data analysis in a statistical analysis to see the differences between uh, my groups. Um, what I learned from this is that sometimes gene expression and protein expression can go both to the same direction, or they can go to, to opposite directions. Um, so this could mean that there are other mechanisms that could be uh, in play when these they're exposed to these nanoparticles. And uh, the next steps that I plan to do is to do some uh, silencing of certain genes. Um, that are important for these mechanisms and see how it actually affects um, the, the addition of the treatment of the top particles. Yeah, that's a good summary. Uh, anybody else? Uh, we are just, we just filled that worksheet. Um, yeah, so you know, maybe just listen and then you can take that home and work on it. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Any other thoughts? So what you kind of did is you uh, wrote answers to some of the sections that actually go on your poster, right? So the next step here is to think about what are the actual sections on your poster and how are you going to put what you just wrote or described on the poster? Right. So these are sections in, in a typical poster. Uh, they are, I, I, when I say typical, that really is that many, there are posters which don't even have these. And we look at some examples of some really creative posters. But typically, this is how a poster is done. So you have a title because people want to know what your poster is about. So what would go into the title is some of that objective, your research hypothesis that some of you shared or wrote down. 
introduction. An introduction is your background or context and the, some of the, the answer for that question would come from also from your objective and remember the orb, so objective relevancy and impact. The introduction would include a little bit of your objective and a little bit of the relevancy. Why are you doing this? What's the background? What's the introduction? What is the situation right now in your space and what prompted you to do this? Think back to the day when you went to your professor and said, this is why I'm curious to know what prompted that. That's your introduction. Theory on methods, some of you've got this. Uh, if it's a creative uh, project, you would talk about your art or whatever artistic techniques you use, writing or photography. So that's your method there. Results, some of you already have this. You, you did something. If it's if it's a creative activity pro uh, project, you created a series of five paintings, right? So that's your result. Conclusion. Conclusion is if it's a if it's a science project, you know what your conclusion is. I found this, or uh, I found that this. What you said that was I don't remember, but that was a great uh, conclusion. Further plans. Some of you mentioned this, uh, and you wrote wrote in your worksheets. Acknowledgements, that's a standard uh, uh, section, especially if you're working with um, NSF and uh, projects like that, you're required to acknowledge them. So make sure you do that. If there's a funding source, make sure you uh, figure out how to acknowledge them. That's a typical, uh, that's a very typical uh, uh, structure. Again, if you are looking at something that's not so steady, uh, you may not have like the, the theory, you, you may, may not have conclusions that might get merged into one. So kind of, but that's the general thing, kind of some kind of a title, you talk about an introduction, you talk about what you did and then what did you find out and what are your future plans because research is never ending and a lot of you will uh, uh, be continuing this or have plans to kind of do something else with this. Maybe you present at a conference and if you're doing that, if you're presenting at some other, uh, at another conference, say that I'm going to go to Washington DC next month to present there and that's my plan with this, right? And again, acknowledgements. So when you look at this, think about which of these six sections apply to your project which don't apply, and what is the story of your research. Again, uh, the second uh, thing is organizing. Remember, very, very important. The space on a poster is too limited to post your entire research project. Extracting important ideas and organizing information efficiently is, is essential to the research, to the poster design process. And some of you brought this up that how much do I include? So, what you include is some of the things you wrote already. Those are, if you can put that in a way that is effective and attractive. For example, let's go back to the, to your say results. If you have a really good picture of your results, put that. If your say introduction, your background, uh, there's a really nice statistic or there's a really nice graphic that you can use. Use that. People understand visuals much better than they understand text. So any, if there is a really, if there is a specific color that speaks to any of these sections, think about how you can use that color. Think about font. Uh, again, uh, your uh, results, if you have a really cool graph or chart that really explains your results very well, use it. Yes. I have a question. So if we're doing qualitative research, it, I've noticed that my poster is getting really wordy. Do you, and it's kind of hard to, I mean, we don't really have like graphs and like data that we put in charts or anything like that. Do you have any recommendations or tips to help with that? Yes, so uh, and we will look at we'll look at some examples. But use pictures, use photographs. 
if you say your qualitative research, you've analyzed a historical textbook, and uh, say Melville, uh, put a picture of Melville. I don't know what Melville looks like. I know Melville, there's a lot of research happening around Melville, and there's a lot of qualitative data uh, around Melville's work, but I have no clue. And if somebody put a, had Melville on their poster, and I see a picture, I would go up to them and say, hey, is that Melville? I've never seen him. You know? Anything that makes people curious about your work. Use pictures, use pictures of buildings. Uh, where did you do your research? Did you go to a different country? You know, put a flag. If, you were, if your research was in Spain, put a picture of, uh, uh, put a flag of Spain. If you interviewed uh, a Native American tribe, put something that is representative of that tribe. If you interviewed people belonging to that tribe, use an artifact that's very distinctive, and then people will come and ask you, that looks very interesting, tell me more. Okay. Okay, does it answer your question? Can we look at some examples? Yeah, I got some ideas. Okay. Yeah, so I'm interested in the so now you kind of have some idea of your sections. You know what you might want to put on these sections. You think about organizing. How do you organize these sections? There are several ways to do that. So we'll talk about the layout. Um, a lot of posters are landscape. Uh, for the showcase, I understand your size is 36 by 48. Uh, you can do both portrait and landscape, but I think a lot of students end up doing landscape. There is, you can also do a portrait. Uh, you can lay out, your, lay out your posters and columns and ha uh, my recommendation would be at least do two columns. It's very hard to read a, a 48 inch poster from left to right. People cannot read that much. So people uh, usually like eyes go down and right. So having at least two columns is what I would recommend. You can also do three columns and four columns and you can just go to totally random. And we look at some examples and see what I mean by that. But make sure that people are able to look at things in sections and not have your text running across. We'll talk about the organization and update. Uh, in a different place. But think about how you want to lay out all these different sections that you already have now. So that's what I was talking about. Uh, English language audiences read left to right and top to bottom. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about your design. So we already talked about the size, fonts and colors. At Boise State, we know the, we have the blue and orange. But you're not restricted to that. You can use any color. If pink is your favorite color, use that, but be mindful. Don't go far me. Right? Um, it's, uh, yeah, so it's, we have templates. If you go to the undergraduate research website, uh, on our website, we have the Boise State templates, and I'll show screenshots in a bit. If you click on that, it will ask you to make a copy. You create a copy all you have to do is fill in the blanks so it has all the sections laid out they are in the right font they are in the right size all you have to do is replace them with what you want your text pictures graphs and charts think about image, re image resolution apparatus, how to read numbers and data so to your point you have this really cool graph make sure uh, the the way the chart is labeled, people can understand that. Make sure when you blow it up to that 36 by 48 size, it doesn't uh, become blurry, it doesn't pixelate. And graphs are good. And uh, also remember, you should be able to explain that within a short period of time. Uh, the average amount of time people are likely to spend uh, with you is about two to three minutes. So keep that in mind when you are asked to explain your poster. How much can you explain in that time? Uh, think about uh, formatting, boldface, italics. All these are ways to make some text stand out. But don't overdo it. 
uh, don't use comic sans, don't use crazy fonts. Um, Boise State, if you use our templates, we have Arial and Gotham that we rec recommend. Those are really good fonts. The uh, reason for that is most people will look at a poster from a distance of uh, two, two to four feet. It's a kind of, yeah, this much. Uh, and those fonts are really easy to read from that distance. Uh, so if you're experimenting with a font, uh, Put it on your uh, laptop and stand back a uh, distance of two to four feet and see if you are able to read it. Okay. Some fonts, the A's and E's mix up and it becomes a little bit crazy. So keep those things in mind. Think about other things, logos, funding statements, your references, uh, QR codes. A lot of posters uh, these days <coughs> like to use QR codes and that's a great way to minimize on text and direct people to additional information that you necessarily don't want to put on your poster, but you want to share, right? There are, QR codes are also very good for creative projects where say you created a video. You cannot put your video on your poster, but you can have a QR code to, to your YouTube site, uh, to your YouTube page, and people can see the video there. Same for if you have a portfolio or some other, uh, or a writing project that you've done, you can direct Use QR codes to direct people. Uh, contact information, if you want people to be able to contact you, it's that networking piece, very important. Put your email, your phone number, or however you want them to contact you, and uh, they will be able to see that. So this is what um, I was talking about earlier. Uh, when you go to our website, go to that section, we have something called a traditional poster template which is your, uh, the 36 by 48, the portrait. There is something called the better poster template. I will talk about that in a bit. And there is also an empty poster template set to 48 by 36, which you can put in your own colors and whatnot and do whatever you want. So this is the traditional poster template. It has all those sections laid out. So introduction, uh, your uh, analysis data, your title, and so on. So use this if this works for you. Uh, this is something that's been kind of picking up in academia, and I really like this. Um, some faculty do not like it. So, so be mindful of that, uh, and if you're if you want to use this, maybe check with your faculty. Uh, but what the better poster format is, is it came from that student who got really frustrated going to academic conferences and then looking at all these posters and not understanding what people are putting on posters. So he came up with his own poster design. And uh, you, uh, if you Google that, you'll come across this video. It's a really nice video, it's about a four minute video. Um, so what's that? So what the, this poster format essentially is, is it does away with a lot of things that people cannot assimilate in a poster. And it just keeps the gist of what people can digest easily. I'll show you what, that, what I mean by that. This is a better poster format. It has this big block in right in the middle where you put your main findings and it says translate it into plain English and emphasize the important words. So that section is where you put something like uh, my research shows that if by using a certain kind of uh, uh, technique to control wildfires, we can bring down wildfires in Idaho by 15%. That's it. Plain English, very little jargon, and think of explaining what you're doing to your eight-year-old cousin or your eight-year-old sibling. What have you done? What is that big picture? Again, go back to the R, your objective relevancy and big takeaway. 
this is that big takeaway right at the middle. What is that one single thing you want people to remember about your poster? That goes there. Once people get that, so that's what is going to draw people to your poster. They see that and say, okay, this student did this and now I get it. So once they're there and they want to know more, that's when you say, okay, this is my background. The background is again, who cares? Which is uh, your relevancy from the org. Why, why did I do this? These are the methods I used to do this. And these were my results and conclusions. And if they want more, there's something called an ammo bar, where you put all those other things that are like a dressing on your, uh, for your poster. So you talk about extra graphs. There's some, there's this really cool graph that you want to have on your poster, but you don't want it uh, taking up a lot of attention. You put that, you put some data, you put some, uh, you put your uh, references and acknowledgements and logos. This also works because say you're talking to somebody, you're talking, explaining your uh, main findings to somebody and somebody else walks up to your poster and that happens a lot. Um, conferences are crowded places. So while you're talking to the first person, the second person can look at all the stuff you've got on the side and kind of understand some of that. So this format also works in those kind of situations. And you can tell them, I'll, be, I'll speak to you in a minute, but feel free to look at uh, the stuff I've got on the side. Or right. well, it also plays for the QR code. Uh, we have additional resources on our website. I will uh, share the deck. Uh, there are other templates. Uh, you, if you Google, just Google poster templates, you'll come across some lots of templates. You can just download them and start using them. Um, again, some more pointers about design. Uh, you've got your you, you've got your sections in place. You've got an idea of what you're going to say in those sections, and you start you started thinking about colors and fonts. Um, how I what software you're using? Um, PowerPoint is very widely used. Uh, uh, Illustrator and InDesign are also used, um, especially if you're a design student or an art student, you might be more familiar with that. Word count. There are a lot of theories around word count. Uh, some websites will say keep it to 300 words, and some, a lot of them will hover around that 500 to 800. I've also seen uh, guidelines for a thousand words, so I don't know. My recommendation would be put enough information that covers your org, your objective, big, uh, big uh, relevancy, and big takeaway. As long as people get that from your poster, that is enough. Do, do not try to cover all the white space on your poster. It's it's a very valuable real estate, and you don't want to cover it. Think of it as a room with furniture. Too much furniture makes it look like your board. So. Think about that, be very mindful of that. Font size. A reader can stand at a distance of five to seven feet and read the text. That should be your goal. Uh, people will kind of try to look at what you've got going and they'll approach you only when they find it interesting. Uh, guidelines for font size. Keep the title between 70 to 100 point. Your subheadings 40 to 50 and body text 24. So these are general guidelines. I would recommend not go below this. Nobody will be able to read a 12 point size on your poster. Uh, images, again think about which sections can be better explained with an image. And use images, but don't overdo it. Use a few images that are really attractive, that really tell a story and help you explain your research. Uh, at least 300 dpi, so that helps with your image not getting blurry. Uh, think about copyright laws and uh, image usage guidelines. There are several websites out there where you can get free pictures. So use only those. Or take your, use your own pictures. Uh, clip art. Uh, bio render is used a lot by biology and biology students and other STEM folks. Pictures of the parts. 
Okay, the colors do not distract. Use one or two harmonious colors to set the tone. If you like pink, use pink. And one other color that kind of offsets the pink, say a brown or a darker color. Use blue and orange if you are uh, uh, you want to kind of get the boise state feel. Uh, equations should be kept to a minimum. Remember, your audience is usually going to be very general, unless you are a uh, super special, uh, super specialty kind of a conference where it's a very uh, specific audience. A lot of people won't understand equations. Uh, be large enough to read, accompanied by definitions, and label any diagrams and terms. Keep styles, font, and uh, color and font consistent. Don't use ten fonts. Use one font and play with colors and uh, play with um, slides. Can I see the previous slide real quick? Sorry, what? Can I see the previous slide real quick? Slide. I have a question. So you said um, use a certain text for body. Would you say that has to be consistent? So like 24 for each body all around the poster yeah. instead of having different text depending on the length? Yes. As a general rule, yes, because that will help people read your poster and it will help them, their eye travel. Remember, whatever is the biggest will be seen first, right? So if you have just three font sizes, people will understand that the biggest is the heading, the next big thing is all your subtitles, and anything under that is your body text. So it will help them kind of analyze what you've written. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So let's look at some posters. Uh, we all have some idea. Uh, we also know what we like, what attracts us to posters. What do you think? And none of these are good or bad. Uh, they are just posters. What do you like about this one? What do you not like about this? Any thoughts? I like that the graphs are in the middle. I like that it's organized and like it's divided into sections so your attention is drawn to the specific area and you're not like looking all over the place. Yeah. It has a yeah. nice flow, I think. The images are right in the middle, mm -hmm. so it's like, okay, this is what I want. That's probably intentional because uh, images really grab people's attention. And when I'm looking at a poster, if there's an image, I'm going to be focused right in the middle, right? Also, notice that there are just two main colors, and they are contrasting. So the yellow and the blue, they work really well together. about this one. Again, notice that this is a completely different layout from the previous one. Too many colors, I think. Too many colors? They incorporated like a stock image. Very engaging. Right. And uh, you asked what you asked what pictures, right? So one of you asked what what pictures do I post? Oh, was it oh I was just asking, like, how do you demonstrate qualitative data? Because yeah, quantitative, yeah. like you can use charts and graphs, and then qualitative, I was finding it was like a lot of text. Right, and it's okay to just have text. It's okay to not have any graphs for your poster. Um, I really like the image they've used. It's children. It's, it grabs people's attention. Everybody care. a lot of people care about children, research-related children. 
So that works for that research area. It's about momentum and access on school success. And it, I think it, it's a good way. Uh, yeah. I also like how there's fewer text here compared to the previous one. So it doesn't overwhelm me. I want to read it. It, it makes me want to see what is going on. What about this one? I think the text is kind of hard to read um, on the green one. The black doesn't necessarily go super well with that dark green. And it's honestly just really distracting. It's like a almost like Pinteresty clip art kind of look. It doesn't look really professional. I don't think maybe. Yeah. Like the images are providing a whole lot, especially on the right side under metadata. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't see any of that text, so yeah. is it there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great point. I found it kind of hard to identify where you're supposed to start. Yeah. Like reading. Yeah. You don't know where to begin. It has no ending, no beginning, and no end. Right, it's a great point. Other points. Uh, yeah, I particularly think this is a good example of what not to do. Look at that. That looks like a screen grab. I have nobody will ever read it. Nobody cares what that is. It just gives me migraine thinking about what anybody forcing me to read. Right? Look at this person has tried to bring attention to too many things. Look at that thing in the middle. And that's not even research, it's, I don't know what it is. It says Marianne, it's somebody's name, and their title. I, I have no clue what that is. But it's in a starburst, so it, it makes me feel that I'm so, I have to read it. And when I read it, it makes no sense, it's really frustrating, right? They, Try to use, it looks like a qualitative uh, art object to me. And they try to bring in this and all these pictures, but they've overdone it. It's too many things. Look at those, that, those call outs. If they had taken away all that stuff, maybe kept this big thing right in the middle and kind of made it out a little better, fewer colors, I would have read it. But I don't, I will never read this. How about this? It's too much text and the colors aren't, uh, they don't contrast enough. I think they're too similar, so I'm having a hard time following. I do like the bottom left, like the, the big um, like statistics and data. It's hard to follow the flow, like thinking back to your top to bottom suggestion, it looks like you go from the top to the bottom to the left and maybe to the top and then who knows where after that. Yeah, yeah that's a great point. The one thing I like about this is this thing, the way they've used numbers. So. Think about your graphs and data and your chart. Is there an interesting way to show that instead of just having a picture of your graph? Is there a number in there that really makes sense? Uh, like the 66, it says 66 3D specimens available, and there's a picture of a skeleton of a dinosaur. I, I get that, I understand that. that this makes more sense to me than putting this in some kind of a graph. So think about those numbers that your research might have and how you use them. But to your point, when I read this, my eye goes dead. And then when I end there, I just want to go down. So this thing has been missed completely. All this work, hard work that's gone into creating this is all gone, all wasted. There's an NSF logo. I, it's good that people see that, but this may not be the place for it. I would put it on the other side because it's a requirement and you're, you don't have to put, give it so much uh, space, so much uh, real estate. Yeah, I don't know what's Let's look at this one. Again, it's a uh, 
it's not a STEMI project. I think I'm more interested in whatever that background image is than anything else to be on. Like I try to read them, like what's going on back there. Yeah. I think I see what they were going for, and I like that creativity behind it to engage yeah. the background photo, but I just think they missed the mark with the organization of everything. Because on the left side, this information, although there's high contrast, it gets lost. The bolded titles and the text, it's just like you don't really want to look at that. To his point, you just want to look at the background image. I think yeah. it's a good example of what you mentioned about keeping your text all the same mm -hmm. font. Like, I'm understanding where the subtitles are, but then each section has a different size. And that, like, especially that small one, that one really gets lost. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a great point. And I didn't want to think about that for this poster. So if you see, like, this is italics, it's the same font size as this. And that. Uh, there are only three font sizes in this entire poster. This, this, and this. And the title. Probably some more bit match. But when I kind of in my head I know that this is something not that I necessarily don't have to read. It's like a side note kind of thing. That also looks like that side note. But I think with all of you, the background just kills it. It just just makes me not want to see anything else. They could have used it, to your point, but the idea just went away with the person who was Okay. So that's that. Um, the next section is the last section where we talk about how do you talk about your poster. But any questions before that? Design, organizing, your uh, what goes on your poster, what, keep, what you keep out of it. Yes. How many? How much is too much pictures? When do you know it's too much pictures? When you put everything on it, stand back four feet and see what you notice. If it feels too much, it is too much. Or have someone look at it. There is no specific number. I mean, I would say ten pictures is definitely too much. But Think about your research. What, when you want to visualize your research or whatever it is that you've done, what imagery comes to your mind? If you had to explain your research to a eight year old with a picture, what picture would you choose? So simplicity is the goal. So for designing the poster, there's the templates online. Do those, are those kind of just like a fill it in with our own stuff and then we'd be able to print it off that way? Yep. 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 And then if we wanted to do something separately, you'd recommend it maybe make names like the slides or something like that? Okay. Just open a Google slide, set it to 36 by 48 inches, and then. Just design it that way. Other questions? So this might be more just like something on my end, but if, uh, I tried to uh, I tried to access the poster templates in the past, and uh, I tried with both my uh, employee and student email, and every time I've been denied access, I just am not able to see them. Do you have any idea like what might be going on there? It should prompt you to make a copy. It doesn't do this. No, no, it just is access to mine. Give me your email and you can just write it out Thank you. Other questions? Okay. Well, I'm available. To, um, I'll leave my email for all of you to get back with questions. But we'll talk about talking about your poster. So you have spent, say, 10 hours designing the most beautiful poster anybody has ever seen. And you're really excited about it. It's April 10th, and you take your poster and you put it up on the easel, and then you're standing there, and then you have a nervous breakdown, and you're like, What do I say now? People are coming, and I have no clue what do I say about my poster. 
right? So again, think back to the org, your objective, your relevancy, and your meeting. What you say is as much as the other person understands. Again, here, who's your audience? Very, very important. For the showcase, there will be a diverse audience. There will be your PRs from other departments. There will be faculty. There will be deans and um, associate deans and other administrative people. There will be uh, family. And a lot of these people will have no clue of what to do. Some of them might, your faculty might come to your poster and then they are what you are doing, but apart from them, nobody knows. Keep that in mind when you use language, when you explain stuff to them. Under, only explain what you think they might understand and we will we'll kind of talk through them. So getting ready, a lot of you probably done this but and you know it. Get your nutrition, stay hydrated, dress comfortably. Uh, be yourself, smile and pay attention to body language, uh, very important, uh, have fun, this is your chance, this is your moment to talk about your research, something you've been working on for a long time and you know, you, you know this, you've got this, so keep that in mind, what do you say, again it's a, it's a conversation between you and the people interested in your talk. So remember that it's it's a conversation. It's a back and forth. So say uh, you're standing by a poster and people are walking by and somebody looks at you. What do you say to them? You, you are an introvert, just say hello. You can also ask them how you feel in the conference. Would you like to know more about my research? A lot of students say this and it's perfectly okay to say that. Would you like me to take you through my poster? Yes. That's what you're there for, right? So be direct and say, would you like me to do that? So that's how you start off. Engaging them. So once they say yes, yeah, this sounds interesting, tell me more. So give an elevator pitch. Does anybody know what that is? You, uh, I'm guessing a lot of you know, or you already have an elevator pitch. So start off with that. An elevator pitch is a brief, big picture overview about your research. 30 to 45 seconds is the attention span people have, and that's all you need to be sharing at this point about your research. For example, say, I'm a soil researcher. My research helps identify safe brush variants that are resilient to drought and can thrive in areas destroyed by fires. My findings have the possibility of impacting reforestation and wildlife restoration efforts in these regions of Idaho. And if you analyze that, it's got those three things, the objective, relevancy, and, and the big takeaway, the or. So this is the or. Your elevator pitch is your or. Give this. And we'll also talk, talk about practicing, but very important, to write down what your elevator pitches and practice them. Will you say that again? One of those three things you said. Uh, I will show you my slides. Oh. Yeah, we, we yeah. Okay. Me, if you have some time to stay back, I'll take you through that again. Oh, okay. But yeah, quickly. So it's quite some ways in the beginning, but oh, I can watch the recording. It's okay. No, that's okay. So, the orb of the poster is the objective, the relevancy, and big data. So, this is something you remember while you're designing your poster and also while you're talking about your poster. So, your objective is really what is your research question, project objective. Relevancy is why would the audience care? And big takeaway is what are your key takeaways? So that's the all. Thank you. Yeah. So you've done with your elevator pitch. Giving a 
pitch to a showcase judge. So you, you're standing there and this person walks by and he says, well, I'm one of the judges. Uh, uh, talk to me about your poster and they've, they've got this pad in their hand with a pen. So for a showcase, showcase judge and you will have at least two of these people and they'll identify themselves. What do you say to them? And for them, it would be slightly different because they are scoring you, right? So for them, think about your pitch duration no more than 30 minutes, no more than three minutes, uh, no more than three minutes, 30 seconds is a sweet spot. So a slightly longer pitch and cover the orb, your objective relevancy and impact, but also Go back to the rubric. Go back to the rubric and cover this. Talk to them about the background context, which is kind of your objective. That and the purpose is your objective. Talk to them about your outcomes, which is your key takeaways. Take Impact is your relevance. So make sure you cover that. And the last thing is your poster, your design. So you get points for that. So write a script. Make sure it's kind of in that range, 60 minutes, 60 seconds to three minutes, and practice. So this that would be just for a showcase judge. Taylor, this would be for everybody else who comes to you. Sorry. Uh, do the showcase judges, so for that, it, um, is there are people being looked at based on what school they're in, or is it just overall, or how does that necessarily work? I am not 100% sure. Maybe Wayne has a better answer for that. I, I don't think the judging is tied necessarily to your school, per se. Um, each, each award, one of the awards that are are given out are tied to a specific field. I mean, there are colleges that give out awards. There are some that are graduate college specific. So while you're not being judged on necessarily what you're in, potentially the award you might you might qualify for may be dependent on that. So that may play a factor, but it's not the only criteria. If that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Other questions. Okay. So you've given your said hi. You've given your elevator pitch on this table. I love soil research. I am very passionate about it. Tell me more. So that's when you say, ask some of these questions because you want to figure out what this person cares about. How familiar are you with this topic? And they might say, well, uh, I'm a scientist and I have this NSF project going on about soil research in Montana. And then you know who you are talking to. Uh, you might ask, what is your background? They might say whatever. And then you will know what to say to them. Is there a specific area you would like me to elaborate on? Again, another good way if you have a lot of things that you want to share. Have you worked on something similar? Do you know about, if you have a jargon, if you have a chemical or a molecule you're working on, ask them, do you know what this is? Do you know what is uh, epigenesis? I don't know, I just threw that out. So based on what they tell you, then that becomes that conversation. Remember, it's a conversation. They say, yes, I know this. Uh, then you say, okay, so my research, then you take off from that and then explain more. And then use some of those questions. It's really that conversation with, with, with that person. Um, this is something, this is again, like having a method to the madness. How do you tell your uh, tell the story of your research. And there are some storytelling techniques that you can use. Like quickly run through these. Uh, yeah, we have one few minutes. Uh, a lot of you might have come across this uh, in a writing 101 class, but these arts work very well when you have to uh, talk about something that you're doing. It's basically storytelling. So use a storytelling art. This is a traditional art where 
you start off with an exposition, there's rising action, there's, there's a climax, falling action and resolution. So for instance, well, you start off with saying, uh, Idaho has so much land area the forests. And the last several years, we've seen uh, wildfires on the rise. And that has caused so much deforestation and so much wildlife has lost habitat and then share all those numbers and say, well, because of that, uh, we are predict predicting, the scientists are predicting that uh, some species might become extinct. So that's your climax. That's what, why should people care about the story? And then you say, well, my research addresses that by planting sagebrush. And by doing that, we hope to bring back all this wildlife and we are hoping things will change and whatever you are hoping to do that. Uh, so talk about that. And following action, talk about what what are the predicted consequences of your research. This is going to help Idaho in so and so way. We are hoping uh, more forests uh, are rehabilitated and stuff like that, not even just making all this up. But, and then resolution is next steps. This is what we plan to do in the future. This is where we see this going. So that's your story. So that's a very traditional app. Hollywood stories follow this, a lot of them. Another way to um, give your story is think about news and how journalists uh, share news. Did you know that if we do not control wildfires, half of the wildlife in Idaho will be eliminated by 2050? That's news. That that scares me. So I want to know more. So then you say, well, my research addresses that. And then you kind of come out and say how. The compass box is another way to share your story. You start off with the issue saying, um, going back to the same wildfire example. Uh, wildfires in Idaho are, are destroying uh, habitat for animals and humans. That's the issue. So what? Why should I care? That's the relevancy and uh, impact. Why should that matter to me? So talk about that. What are the problems with that issue? What are the solutions? Which is all the different solutions that people have proposed, but none of them are working, which is why you're doing this research, to find a solution that is different or a solution that works, and the benefits of that solution. So you fill all these sections and you have some kind of a story to take your audience through. So that's done. You've told your story, and this person kind of knows what you do now. So closing, you are standing there, you have a goal. Uh, you are trying to network, you want to make some connections, you want uh, maybe find a job. So think about that. Uh, ask, if you want to ask feedback, that's a great uh, place to do that. If that's a faculty who's in your research area, say it's a faculty from Montana State who's also a soil researcher, ask them, what do you think of my research? Do you see any gaps? Do you have any suggestions for me to uh, continue this? Contact information, if this is a person you want to uh, reach out to later, ask them for their business card. Um, handouts. If your research has a very interesting handout or something you want people to read, you can also keep a bunch of copies and say, well, this is more about my research and students do that. Uh, yeah, so that's another thing you can uh, try to do. Uh, this is something I came across in uh, some source that says, a minimum bar, try to make three meaningful new connections. So think about that, three. Okay. Last slide, uh, I think. Body language. Smile, make eye contact with people. Use hands to point at relevant parts. Again, if you have lots of things on your poster, point at them and say, this is my graph, this is my chart. Don't turn your back to the audience. Don't uh, read your poster and the person is standing behind you. Don't do that. Prepare and practice. 
again, act as that elevator pitch, <coughs> practice your pitch for the judges, uh, get that timing right, um, don't uh, stand there and scroll, scroll your phone, and don't look at Instagram, people will not come because they know you're busy looking at something else. So keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, last slide. Again, uh, don't use a lot of jargon. We've covered this. People won't know. Using filler words like um, ah, uh, don't overdo that. Uh, leaving poster unattended, reading from your poster, browsing social media on the phone. Again, things to remember. Um, the libraries asked me to share this. They are uh, having these poster hours in the library right here um, in the Franco line moments. Those are the times. Uh, feel free to walk in. They'll be there helping you with your poster. They'll uh, also be helping you with printing your poster. So if you have questions about that, there's a product printer uh, which you can use to print your poster. So. Uh, go there, ask them questions, and they'll help you out. You can also email Ellie directly, and she's awesome. She knows a lot of things. This is something else that the library asked me to share. This is a workshop for graduate students on how to use AI in your dissertation and thesis. That's also next week. Um, yeah, so that's that. And with that, we are done. That's my email. I'm around. If you have questions, um, I'm happy to meet with you or talk more.